Podcast is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, good publishing day to all of you once again, and for Author You, your guide to book publishing. And today's topic is one that usually is not normal, especially when it comes to writing and publishing and author-related shows, but it is essential. In fact, it's critical, crucial, because it's all about the IRS. (laughs) It's all about taxes. And what you can do, what you can't do, what you should be thinking about doing. And as you know, as, as the year progresses, and I'm, I'm going back to my old days when I really was heavily involved in the whole financial planning process. And I always brought my clients in, in early, uh, March, in the March spring time frame and always late fall. So we could do planning. Here's what we're looking forward to. And then in the fall time, we could look back what happened that we thought was going to happen and maybe what came in unexpectedly. So we could do the strategy and there would be no surprises. This is, which is so important. Well, with this is Abby Eisencraft and she's the CEO of Choice Tax Solutions, which works with taxpayers all over the United States, as well as people who are outside of the United States but are required to pay taxes and report in the U.S. She's an IRS enrolled agent. She's an accredited tax advisor and tax preparer. And she is very savvy about all things dealing with retirement. The other great thing about Abby, she's also one of us. She is an author. And her book, 101 Ways to Stay Off the IRS Radar, along with Combat Tax-Related Identity Theft, the workbook is something that you probably sh- really should add to your shelf. Um, it won't be bedtime reading. This is, this is like, how do I stay alive? How do I survive? How do I do the smart thing? So Abby does workshops and seminars and presentations, and she's with us for this hour. Hi, Abby. How are you? I am wonderful. So excited to be here. Well, we're really glad to have you because this, this, I mean, I'm not kidding. This is a crucial, essential topic that um, I get, you know, some questions. Well, you know, what do I need to do to pay sales tax? That's about as far as it goes um, when I sell books. So they're not thinking about income tax. They're not thinking about money. They're not taking it seriously like a business. And, And that's what you help people do so much. But they need this layer of help, too. Oh, no, absolutely they do. So, um, you know, in you, when you have a new, cl- a new author, a writer come in to sit down with you with a consultation, what are some of the critical questions that you ask or maybe you ask them to bring in to you so you can have a better picture as you go forward? I think that a lot of people don't think that it's a business, and they don't take it seriously, so they're not doing the things that they need to do. For example, you need to separate your personal bank account from your business bank account, and there should be separation. You should be depositing your income into the business account. You should be paying your expenses from the business account. Look, it's all your money. You can have it. You can transfer it between accounts, but don't pay personal bills from the business account and vice versa. The IRS wants to see that you're taking it seriously because if you're not, why should they? Well, then, then we really we coast quite easily into it's just a hobby and you're just diddling with something. Exactly. And, you know, especially on an audit, um, I don't want to say that you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent, but it sure feels that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, yes. Yes. And, and so um, do they need a separate tax ID number for the business or can it, what, you know, do they use their own? What would you suggest? Well, in this day and age of identity theft, if you're a writer and you're probably working with a lot of different companies in many cases, 
and especially for freelance writers. And think about all the times that you're giving your social security number to mm-hmm. um, everything from Amazon to, you know, just all over the place. In, in anyone's right mind, you cannot be without an EIN number because, you know, who knows what people are doing with these things. Look, it, it's the way the world is now. Identity theft is rampant. And the only two people that require our social security number, that's social security and the Internal Revenue Service. Everyone else, including Macy's, really doesn't need it. You know, we've got to be more careful, and an EIN is the way to go. It's free. Go to irs.gov. Get it immediately. Now you have a little, another layer of protection. Well, I, I think that that's really smart. Just as a side note, I actually got a letter from the IRS yesterday, uh, this last week saying it looks like someone had used my Social Security number um in another employment thing and i'm going oh man now i got to go back i'm going to go to back to these you know all the credit reporting get a block on and all that and i'm telling you abby yeah, yeah. i ran into roadblocks doing that yesterday um and they you know with the the free credit reporting you can come in that way and start that process and i uh they started asking me all these series of questions and guess what i flunked them I mean, I answered all the questions. I lived here, there. I did this then. I, you know, I've never had a mortgage with this company and blah, 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 blah. And, and I flunked it. So then they said, now you have to send us a copy of your passport or this or your social security number. I'm going crumb. And I just said, I don't have time for this. I have to, I'll have to find another way to deal with it. But I just. Yeah. It, it's terrible. You know, what's funny is that the identity thieves, they know the answers to all the questions. And, and sometimes that's yeah. the reason you flunk. You flunk because someone has done something else where they've answered the questions. They're going, here are the answers to the questions. So, you know, it's certainly tough. I mean, everyone needs to get a copy of their um, free credit report. And it's the uh, website is annualcreditreport.com. That's where you yep. get a free one. And That's where I help. was. That's where I was. And I flunked it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, so. it's terrible, but, you know. It even, they even charge you for the freezes, and there's a, there's a new law coming out where, well, hopefully it passes, where they're going to stop charging you for the freezes because, listen, we need help, we need protection, and, you know, that's the way we can do it, by putting freezes and flags on our account. Well, I think so, and, you know, um, just for all our listeners, this would be the time for you to uh, jot off, you know, go to your, your congresspersons and your senators. I don't know where this is going to be voted from. Um, I'm, I'm assuming this is national, Abby. Will this be a national mm-hmm. thing? Okay. So this yeah, would be a time yeah. for all of you just to take one minute and just Google your senator or your congressperson, your reps, um, uh, email, and just shout off a note to say, you know, please support the the no charge for any freezing on a credit report. And I don't know what the bill number is, but they'll they'll figure it out. Yeah, it, it's definitely a must. I mean, they, they need to help us because a lot of people mistakenly think, well, I can just get a new Social Security number. And the answer is you can't. No. It's not that. <laughs> it's uh, not that. I, th- I, think it, I think in, like, witness protection, they'll give you a new one, but, but not really other very, very dire circumstances that they'll do that. So here's the problem. If you get a new Social Security number, even if you're lucky enough to get one, what about your history? What about your work history? That's not going to come forward with you, and then you're going to have a problem down the line when you go to collect. So, you know, it, it's a nightmare situation. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, now that the animal's out, let's shut the barn door. That's a problem. You know, it, it was just too free, too easy. Everybody demanded it, your Social Security number. And you know, do- think about it. You go to a doctor's office, and, you know, you have to give your social, all the information, and the hackers know that, the criminals know that, and here's what they do. You know, someone's working there, maybe they're not making a lot of money, maybe they're a single mom with a child, they have a situation. They'll say, listen, I'll give you 500 bucks for every name and social that match. Well, they go to people at hospitals and doctor's offices where they have all this info, and what do you think happens? People give it up because they need the money. So they right. become they become co-conspirators because of their oh, own absolutely. yeah they do oh, yeah yuck. Uh, yep. yeah yeah you'd be surprised how many cases of identity theft that we see especially in a tax office and um, I'll say anything changed what what changed in your life and you'd be surprised how many people will say oh I I was in the hospital or I had a baby or you know just when you start seeing trends 
you, you know it's coming from somewhere. So uh, it happens frequently. Mm-hmm. What you know? Have you followed um, the news that came out a couple of uh, this really over the summertime that Facebook wanted to start gathering banking information um, and all that? And I, I remember posting something saying, "Not on your life do you want to give Facebook <laughs> the, your banking information? Not on your life." Yeah, you know, it's amazing how much information people put up on Facebook. And I mean, I know it's supposed to be a social thing, but I mean, I I wouldn't touch Facebook until I had the book. I said, when I became an author, I said, I have no choice now. But having to do it really, you know, again, wasn't by choice. The things that people put there, you know, anybody can put stuff together if, if you're really trying to, you know, do something nefarious. Let me give you an example. God, when I first started in tax, People would come in and maybe, uh, you know, we'd collect all their information and the email address would be Lisa 0707. And I'd say to her, okay, Lisa, now that I know your birthday, <laughs> how much mm-hmm. harder is it going to be for me to find other things? So between the hacking and Facebook trying to get all this information and the stuff that people put out there, you know, they don't help. Those things just don't help. That's common sense. You know, protect your stuff, protect your taxes, protect your, you know, when you use some of the free services online, there's nothing that's free in life, really. So they're, they're doing something with your data, right? They're All the time. Yep, they are. Data. You know, and you're right. I see those numbers, you know, at Hotmail or at Yahoo or <laughs> fill in the blank. And it's just a kiss yeah. of death, you know, for the worst case. And I'll tell you one thing, and we're going to go to our first break here. But uh, I know that one of the questions that when I was on for the annual, the free annual credit report thing was referred to both my daughters. How in the hell did they know both my daughter's names? It could be from Facebook. So people, beware. I mean, that's what Abby's saying. You've got to be really smart here. You've got to really protect yourself and your assets and your checkbook. All right. And that's just critical. Um, that, and any, anything else you have. But that crooks are there. All right, we'll be right back. It's author you, your guide to book publishing. With us is Abby Eisencraft, and we are talking taxes today. is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create develop and publish your book without being good with if you already have a book out You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed Zazz, Punch, and Panache. Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, 
business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryle. I love these kind of shows because it goes back to my roots, which was finance. I mean, I was in the financial field for so many years. My very first book was The Woman's Guide to Financial Savvy, and it went on to create so many more. But um, we're talking taxes with this is Abby Eisencraft, and she's the CEO of Choice Tax Solutions. And one of the things, Abby, I wanted to come back and kiss on because we were just, we kissed on it. I want to go a little bit more into it. Because it's, it's the whole factor that social media, whether it's Facebook, um, and I think Facebook is the biggest culprit, is a gold mine for people who are looking to steal information about you. And you may not even realize the little things that you are putting up may be the window that could come down and destroy you financially with a, with a, with a full-blown identity theft situation. Can you explore that a little bit more with us? You know, I heard something scary the other day from a computer expert, and he said there's a danger when we put pictures up on Facebook because there's going to be that um, facial recognition, and that's going to be developed more and more. And think about it. When you have accounts that you might have a facial recognition to get into, and then there's your picture that you're putting up on Facebook, you're giving the thieves the, the key to your front door. So that that part was really scary when I heard of that. I'm like, wow. Whoa. Whoa. I, I said, That's I, I don't, frightening. <laughs> yeah. It, it sure is. But think about it. We've gone to thumbprint. And um, yeah. believe it or not, they say that you can, you can uh, at least the uh, thieves can duplicate thumbprint somehow and uh, they can get into things. So it's. It's amazing, but when we put out our information like that, it's just not smart because I could look at things, and again, you know, I'm I'm not a identity thief. You're just not an identity thief, but there are people. I mean, just the stuff is common sense. I look at things, and and I'm like, do not do because you're giving people information that is dangerous. Um, you know, I, I'd mentioned that there was a, a colleague put up that her father passed away and she was grieving and put up all these things. And, you know, just, just think what a, what a thief could do. What does a thief call her and say, hey, is this outstanding bill or your father bought this? Mm-hmm. Um, would you please go ahead and pay for it? You know, again, mm-hmm. that's the oldest trick in the book. But, um, you know, wasn't that Paper Moon, <laughs> that movie? But people do that stuff all the time. Yeah. And they, that's how they do it. Yep. It's very common. In fact, you know, those before social media, before the Internet, um, those people would scan the obits and then they would call the widow or whoever was identified as the next of kin with a story about, you know, your father, your husband, your fill in the blank um, had ordered this. Um, and, you know, it was just, you know, and they would think, oh, my God, we have to take care of it. You know, obviously you wanted it. Um, so it's, it's yeah, when, you're, when you're in that frame of mind, you're you, you're absolutely devastated. And you can't think straight. I mean, Judith, you, you've counseled you know many people, especially women. You know, when people are in that, you know, probably the first thing you told them when something bad happened like that was to do nothing, right? I mean, they go, "What do I do? What do you know?" Tell them ignore the, it, you know, ignore it. Yeah. yeah. Don't respond. So, um, but it's scary, and you know, I have purposely I don't put up pictures of my grandkids. Um, you know, they're young, they're, um, they're cute. And I know just, just because I know that pedophiles are out there. I mean, we don't need to do, you don't need to expose them. And people are just so blind when they throw everything up. Yeah. It's everything that's out there. And, and that's, it's just unbelievable. It's just too much information. Um, I mean, and, and especially as, um, you know, as business people, authors, writers, we are business people. No one needs to know that, really. You should really be there for business. You know, you're trying to, to get, you know, 
push out your book, um, push out programs, you're trying to make a name for yourself, some of that social stuff needs to really be pulled back. Yeah, so it's it's a new deal. One of the things that I've also, I mean, I have a couple of my clients who are very vocal politically. Um, and it, it, it's not about whether I agree or disagree with them. It's just a dumb thing to do. Uh, that when you're coming out with your book uh, about whether it's about you know, Hogwarts or it's, it's about fruit or it's about relationships, that you need to be posting about those things and get a focal point and you separate it. And either whether you're, if you're going to be on Facebook, since we we're talking about Facebook, you have this personal page where you can say, I think I put up that, you know, we went to see Mama Mia returns and had a good time last night. That's it. That's what we put up. All right. So that's kind of a safe one. But when you go into all those things, you know, maybe instead of putting always the picture of everyone around the table having a good time dining, maybe you take a picture about how beautiful the table looks. That's safe. That's a safe one. So it's it's hard. And, you know, I know it's hard, but it, I think all of us are going to need to have to do a quick, not not someday out in the future, but right now today, an assessment of what you're posting anywhere um, that would include any type of personal information or connecting information to you um, that the or to someone that you're close to, that it could open up, as it, it, you know, a window to maybe take you down. And I hate to say it, but I think we have to be tuned into that. Absolutely. It's a different world now. I mean, think about people posting vacation pictures and the thieves know that they're not home. And, yes, and what exactly. happens? They go home and everything's gone. You know, I mean, there's a massive amount of information out there because of the data breach. You know, the, the Experian put out millions of, of people's information, names, socials. Um, they also have, they say, uh, DMV information that got out too. So, you know, our stuff is out there. And there's a massive amount of tax-related identity theft as well. So, it, Judith, in your case, you got to notice, uh, 10 to 1, somebody used your social security number mm-hmm. because they didn't have a valid number to work. Now, 10 to 1, it, it, it's not going to harm you. That person is not trying to get into your account. But, again, you don't know that. But they just wanted to work, and maybe they either had your social security number from something or they just took a random number and, you know, you were the lucky winner. But, you know, we've seen that happen. You know, someone who is uh, not legal to work in the U.S., he can't get paid without a Social Security number, so they make one up. Well, let me take you, tell you a horror story, and we'll jump to uh, another topic here in this. But I had a uh, – my bookkeeper was, you know, we were, we were, she was reconciling our – this is our business account. And she said to me, Judith, when did you – you know, who did you write this check to, or when did you write this check for 2317? And I'm going, boy, is that a weird number? I don't remember writing any check for $23.17. And she said, uh-uh, uh-uh, it's $2,317. And I went, uh, I wrote no check for $2,317. And I said, call up and get a picture of that. Go, to, go into the bank statement immediately at the bank and pull up a copy of that picture. It was not our check. This whoever did it, and this is what I learned that anyone can go into an office depot or a Staples or a stationery store and get blank check copy. Someone somewhere had a had seen a, actually a copy of a check that I had written, and had our bank routing and our bank account number. She went on to say to actually put you know the book shepherd, and she put a stack of books like this was my logo on there. And she had all that in, and of course, her name was Nancy something. Um, she signed, um, you know, she signed uh, my name, not as I sign it, and then it was endorsed over. Well, I immediately called the bank. We, you know, we stopped it. Uh, you know, we changed, the, we canceled the account, um, and we went and challenged it. And then the Wells Fargo was contacted. Who, who is where she cashed a check and put it in her account and said, you know, and I just said, you have a crook as a depositor. <laughs> Just, um, but it was amazing. And she did yeah. multiple checks. And what I learned is, is although the bank was liable because it was not my check and it clearly, you know, was not my signature, they don't look at signatures 
Um, and, and they don't look at physical checks anymore unless they're over $5,000. So everyone tune into that. Yeah, that is an unbelievable story, but it, it's just easy enough. You know, they have all these services mm-hmm. online to get checked. Um, mm-hmm. the, the check, you yep. know, you get checked in the mail, and, you know, you, you could order it. All you need is the, yep. you said, route, routing account number. Yep. Someone had your other physical check. So, yep. yeah, it, 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 pe- people do all kinds of crazy things now. It, 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 it's it, too easy. It, you know, it's yeah, easy, it's easy, easy to do. Easy to do. So, yep. We've got, to, we've got to protect ourselves and, you know, common sense. You know, think about what you do and, you know, is, again, in your case, there's nothing you could have done about that at all. But Oh, oh no, I even, called, I even called a, a friend of mine who was going through a nasty breakup, and I said, you know, Robert, that check, you know, that I gave you for, did your girlfriend, ex-girlfriend have that because she's pissed at you? And <laughs> I mean, I was even trying to <laughs> where in the hell is this gone? All right, let's jump, let's jump to another talking. All right, you talk about um, uh, let, let's let's talk about um, just bank statements. And we're talking about this and receipts, credit card receipts. That oh, sure. um, yeah. what do we need to have proof for deductibility for the IRS that we claim? Well, the IRS says that you are allowed to take any allowable deduction, meaning something that's ordinary, reasonable, and necessary. You can take any deduction as as long as it's legitimate for what you do. However, you have to prove anything that's on the tax return. So a lot of people come in when they're being audited and they they just take out their bank statements or their credit card statements and they get like four different highlighter colors and they highlight all these things and think they're going to dump that on the auditor's desk and the auditor will go, oh, great, I'll match it all up for you, sure. And I'll make sure it matches your tax return. The the auditor will look at that and say, you know what, you don't have books and records. And you'll say, but wait, I'm giving you these statements. They go, that's not acceptable. We want receipts. So I'm going to tell you, a scanner is your best friend. Digitize business receipts because they will fade. And I've done audits where, you know, people come in with these staples receipts and, you know, they're, they're yeah. thermal. So, you know, in, in six thermal. months, they're really faded. Yeah. In, in two years, they're blank. Okay, so hold on that, Abby, if you would. We're going to take one more break here um, because this is sure. really important. I want to reiterate this. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Want to publish like a pro today? Well, then take a look at Ingram Spark, the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source. Upload, edit, and manage titles all in one place. Take more control of printing costs with print on demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need. Need to maximize your book's potential, color printing, ebook distribution, print on demand, global reach, and more. Start publishing with Ingram Spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow. That's IngramSpark.com. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 866 1106 Design. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. 
They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right. We are into some, I always say sometimes that I, I'd love to have you all listen to what I talk off the air with, with our guests because we do have some interesting um, side conversations that are relevant to that. So we're going to bring it back because what Abby was kissing on was the dreaded thermal receipts that disappear. It could disappear in a week, all the printing on it. And you, you know, put it aside for taxes and you didn't write on it at all or anything like that. And I want to come back and do that. And I'll, and I'll just tell you when I get those thermal receipts, that I immediately write what what it is that I did, what for an event or a business thing or what the product I bought, and I re, re, put the date on it because those disappear that seems the fastest on it. And then I make a hard copy with the copier um, because it's going to be gone. And most of you don't realize that Thermo is um, a temporary. And, and Abby, do you want to jump on there? Yeah, yeah. When... I do a lot of face-to-face audits with the IRS as well as correspondence audits. And, you know, sometimes we get, many times we get a really tough auditor. And the auditor will say, if I can't read it, it's like you didn't bring it in. So I make sure I never bring in those faded out receipts. I'm in New York where, you know, apartments are the size of shoeboxes, even houses are small. We don't have room for years and years of paper. So you get a scanner. They're really inexpensive. And, you know, you you can get a really good fast one for under 500 bucks and you get your receipts and you digitize them because if you bring in a statement, the IRS is going to say, listen, I don't know what's on here. I'm not going to give you this. You're just not going to win this point. So for example, if you bring in a Staples receipt, well, you say, well, you know, office supplies, well, this, the bank statement or the credit card statement doesn't say that. It could be that you bought pads and pens and toner and that's beautiful. The, the IRS will give that to you in a heartbeat, but it also could have been a lamp for your house. So they can't tell if it's personal or not. So you're responsible for having the receipt with the breakdown. Scan this stuff. Make it easy. Get rid of the paper. The IRS says on audit, as long as you can reproduce it, then they're going to let you have that. And plus, they can verify it third party. Just they'll verify it against that credit card that you use. So it's a win-win. Yeah. So the other thing is, on the credit card, is I would write which credit card you use on it, too. So because it, it does disappear so you know exactly or you put the last four digits of the credit card so you can at least go over and, and show it again if you need to, to double up with an audit. And audits do happen, although what are the percentages, Abby? They're not high. They're, they're not high, but you know what? When it happens to you, you're not happy. So it doesn't make it any better that they're low percentages. And frankly, People who are self-employed are looked at more closely, and it's also by profession, because they know that people 
pad things. They know that people lie. I mean, I've done audits of people. People come in and they say, um, I made half of it up. I'm like, okay, well, we're going to defend the other half. <laughs> and, you know, I, I do what I can for my clients and I teach them, you know, right from wrong. Sometimes people get a little crazy and, and you know, they just get excited. You know, sometimes they're doing this stuff themselves using online software. And every time they put in another number, they see the refund go up. So they, they get a little overzealous and guess what happens when they get nailed they're going to be paying it back with interest and penalties and you know there was a recent court case where uh, people did the taxes themselves and they used software and they did they got pretty well nailed by the irs and then they tried to use the defense well the software let me do it the irs penalized them more for that comment so you know we can't hide behind the software if you have a complex situation get a tax professional, someone you can work with. Even if you want to do it yourself, get help, get some expertise. You know, in 101 ways to stay off the IRS radar, I talk a lot about self-employment because, you know, there's, a lot of people have misconceptions and um, it, it's a fun book, as fun as taxes can be. It's fun because it's money and, and I'm teaching you how to do it right. And um, actually coming out also, I have a a new workbook coming out called uh, the Home Office Workbook. Because many of us work at home, but you have to understand how to qualify for that deduction, and I talk about that as well. Well, can we can we talk about the Home Office and what's? I mean, for example, I, I'm going to throw me that you know I have a 4,000 foot home. Clearly, 2,000 of it is exclusively offices. 2,000 square feet exclusively. They were built as offices. And then I erode into my personal space where we have workshops upstairs in the main area. I don't even deduct for that. But, you know, what can we do? Well, I tell you, in that case, Judith, you know, that's a little bit of an anomaly. Most people do not have a 50% home office deduction because that's a red flag right there. I know. Um, I, I know it's a red flag. And actually, <laughs> I, but, but, I have never... Red I'm flags gonna be, don't matter. It, it, never it, worry about a red flag. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I look, at. I, I remember when we built, oh, our last home and my accountant came in and he says, well, I would have no problem defending this thing. Uh, but, and in your exactly. Yeah, right. Literally. If it's going to flag, right. It, it might flag, but you could defend it. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you're audited. It doesn't matter if this is a year where they're going to look at auditor, uh, pardon me, authors. If you have your stuff in order, like you know, like Judith and I are telling you, you have this stuff scanned. It's, it's all you, know, you have every deduction that mat, you have the receipts that match the deduction. You're going to win. You're going to be out of there in just you know in a short amount of time, and they're going to say, you know what, go home, have a nice day, and you're going to go too, and it's over as opposed to the person who's going to come there and just be arguing about every point, and and it's a hobby. You know, so, mm -hmm. uh, but, but again, back to home office, if you, you know, if you can substantiate it and, and to be 50%, that's fine. But most people, it's usually like a, it's a much smaller percentage because you have, you have a kitchen, a bedroom, a bathroom, you know, start adding those things up. People can see, oh, wow, they go, I think I overshot. And I'm like, yeah, I think you did. So I want you to go back and, you know, step up and take another look at your space and then the whole space and you know, let's, let's. Let's make sure that percentage is what you think it is. And then go in. So where do they get – this also ties into – let's kiss on this one, too, because landlines are disappearing. You're seeing that. I mean, I just canceled all my fact stuff. I just scan stuff and email it now. Um, but that that you're seeing more and more homes or, or more and more offices uh, or the home office just using a cell phone. Should they get another cell phone so it's exclusively, or how do we deal with this? Right. Well, the the IRS says, look, everyone has a cell phone these days. You know, every you go out, every grandmother has a cell phone. So uh, a lot of people say, well, I use half for work, and they think that they could write that off. But but here here's the IRS thought to it, and and it certainly makes a lot of sense. If there is no additional cost for you to use that phone for business then how could you write anything off, right? How many of us have unlimited plans, right? So you have a cell phone because you're going to have a cell phone and you make some business calls. It's not like the old days where they used to charge you per call and you could actually take out a statement and highlight it and show the cost for each call. So if you can't do that, forget it. In addition, if you have something bundled, <laughs> that'll never work. So um, it, it's, it's a good idea to have a separate line because 
on audit, if you know you go here, you go okay. We're up the phone now. Let, let's see your phone expenses. Is this your business or personal? And if you can produce two statements, how cool do you look? <laughs> You're gonna win that point like there's no tomorrow. Of course, if you come so, in with a one bill, the audit yeah, is gonna say, "Come on." You have it bundled. If you do have it bundled, like we have to have internet for our work, so that's bundled in there. Um, and we do have two lines. One is for the personal where it has absolutely nothing on it, and the rest is uh, the other phone line, which is the one that's advertised. This is, you know, how you call me at the office and all that. Um, am I going to get nailed on this, or do I have to create a whole new separate account? The IRS says bundles, no go, no go. Because they go, if it's wow. bundled, we can't figure out what part is what, so forget it. So um, generally speaking, the first line into the house is never deductible. The next line, be it a fast line or another phone line, anything after the first line will be deductible. It's just that bundled stuff. They say, well, you can't, you know, we can't separate this out. It's bundled. So, no, we're not going to allow that. Look, let me tell you something. I have had auditors give me things that they shouldn't have. There are some auditors that will go by the book and other ones that will say, ah, okay, this, this, it's all right. You never know what you're going to get, but the tax law is pretty clear. And... You know, it, it says no to these things. And, you know, my clients didn't argue or I did it last year and they didn't say anything. No, the IRS just didn't catch you yet. It's not that quick. It doesn't happen in a year. And sometimes mm -hmm. can't catch you at all. You know, they can't get everybody, but you don't want to be the one that they do. So if you do things right, if you make, you know, if you keep records, if you do it at the time it's happening and you sit down and you concentrate not just, you know, in the business, but on the business, you're going to have a way better shot of controlling your finances, keeping track of your money, holding on to more of it, which is what we all want to do, and not having an IRS problem. Well, who wants to have an IRS problem for sure? No one wants to on that. But, but I will tell you, um, and we're going to take our, our final break here, but, uh, but I will tell you when I, I look at our phone bill, we have two separate, um, it's broken up between the two lines. So you can see what charges come in on each line, which makes it interesting. Oh, and it, if they're breaking it up, then you've got a good shot at, at taking it and fighting that point. Yeah. I, I Well, so everyone, here's the word of the wise. You need to take a look at this. If you're trying to write off your cell phone, you're, you know, if that's the one you're using for business, it's, it's a separate bill or it's got to be very distinct. We're going to be right back. Lots more here. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd.
One of the most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978-458-2345 and ask for Tom Campbell. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Now, some of the uh, uh, our sponsors, and I was just listening to the um, commercial for Total Printing Systems TPS, um, that it they have some of the most unique cover designs and cover treatments that can be done for the independent press author. That yeah, I'm not even seeing some of these done on the New York published. They're so cool. So I'm going to really you know pay attention to who our sponsors are. Because uh, Thompson Shore does just wonderful, wonderful printing for both cover and interiors, as well as total printing systems. And I wanted to give them just a little extra shout out. All right. So in our last segment with the awesome, awesome, awesome Abby Eisencraft, we are really talking some deep, heavy stuff that you need to pay attention to when it comes to taxes. And that what we you know, we're going to talk about some retirement things, a couple more things I wanted to kiss on on what what you can do with home office deductions and what just stay away from. I think maybe that's a good one, Abby. What should they not try to do? You know, try not to get tax help from the lady who does your nails, the doorman, the, someone who cuts your hair. If you have tax questions, do the research yourself. It's irs.gov. There's some really great publications there that you can read or Maybe schedule an hour with a tax professional who specializes in working with self-employed people, so you really have a good understanding of what you can do and what you could, you know, what not to do. Because again, a lot of people think, oh, authors, you know, may, maybe it took a couple of years for your books to come out. Maybe they're going to look at it as a hobby, and you, you're kind of at a disadvantage until you're not. So. Sometimes mm-hmm. you might need some help to pull this stuff together and, and make mm-hmm. sure that whatever you do, I mean, I know you're probably saying, oh, God, it sounds like, you know, it, what, why so much audit talk? But you know what? I approach every tax return with a, what if it's audited? And, and you should, too, because take a look at it after you finish it and go, am I comfortable sitting in front of an auditor with what I put down, or will they be laughing with me, you know? So you, you don't want that. I mean, I have great fun on audits. Not everybody does. That, that's not everyone's experience. I mean, I know how it's going to end before we even get there. And, you know, I'm tough and I fight for my clients. And I, I've won things that I, I shouldn't have even won. But, you know, it, it, it's how you do it. And, you know, we're, we're all experts in our own craft. And, and I really think that, you know, do it right so things don't come back to haunt you. 
uh, that would be an amen for me. <laughs> that would be a, a huge amen. Um, and, and I know that the following Monday, I have a one-on-one -on -one with my tax pro who actually called me and said, look, I'm going to cut off my office early. I'm just going to come over to your office and sit down with you because I see some things that the other accounts weren't doing that will help you. I think that's pretty – I was pleased, you know, because we, we just did a switch. So I'm always, I'm always pleased with that. When someone yeah, reaches I, out, I work. I work with people, as I said, all over the country, all over the world. We we have teleconferences. We have the same paperwork in front of us because we use secure email, and and I I, I take them through um, a one-on-one -on -one consultation. I call it tax boot camp for the self-employed, and we're going to go line by line on that tax return and talk about what you can and can't stuff. So you know, I'm tough, but that's because any tax return that I do or any of my clients, they're not going to have foolishness on the tax return. Because you know, I, I speak for the IRS, and you know, there's a lot of visibility, and, and I never want uh, Ms. Isaacraft. What were you thinking? <laughs> what is this? That's not going to come from one of my tax returns. You know, I I I love what I do. I think it's great fun, and I take pride in it. And if somebody wants to do something ridiculous, and they're pushing for it, and they're demanding, and they're pounding on the desk, you know what we call those people? Former clients. I'm like, I was, I was born in Brooklyn, so it's like, show them the door. I'm like, and we're done. You have a good day. You're leaving. Goodbye and out. So yeah. I have no time for foolishness. You know, it's um, do it right or don't do it with me. Yeah, I, I think that that's probably wise. <laughs> that's probably wise. All right. What are some other things that we want to kiss on here a little bit here um, that – uh, we, we we talked about the sell. We did. You have a little line I love that how to legally take money away from the IRS and eat later in life. What's that all about? Yes, that is. Let me tell you something. The tax return is not a negative thing. There are some fabulous things that the IRS gives us if we only know where to look. So if we if we have profit from our company. So let's talk about sole proprietors because that's what most authors mm -hmm. generally are. So you know you're. People go, oh, I'm not a business. See, I don't have a corporation. I'm like, no, 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 you are a business. You're a sole proprietor. So we get our wording straight. If, if you're working, you have a business and it's you, even if there are employees, you are the owner, it's, you are a sole proprietor. It is a business. And sole mm -hmm. proprietors can, can take a percentage of their net profit from the business and put that into what's called a step IRA. And that's not like a regular IRA. This is only for the business and it's based on a percentage. But not only did you put money in your pocket, but you're getting a federal tax break right off the top. And if your state taxes the same way, you get a state deduction for in, in many states. So how great to legally take money from the IRS. They're saying do it. So if they're saying to you, hey, take that $10,000 out, put it in your pocket, because your numbers warrant that, and we're going to give you tax breaks now. I mean, wow, talk about huge. And, you know, if you're not at a regular job, you don't have the 401K that other people have, you don't have company matching, really, what are you doing? What are you thinking about for later? How are you going to have money for later? So you have to just take that step, know your numbers, and, you know, not, you can't spend everything that comes in because some of it's your tax money, some of it's retirement money, and some of it's your profit. You have to know those buckets. What are the numbers that, that people can sell away in a stock? I'm sorry, you broke up there. What was that, Judith? What are the numbers that individuals can salt away in a step? Right. Well, you have to have profit, and it's a bit of an right. equation, but it works out to be a little bit less than 20% because it, um, it, it's a certain number less your um, half of the self-employment tax. So, you know, again, you've you got to kind of jump through a couple of hoops to get there. But it works out to be a little bit less than 20% for you. If you have employees, it's 25% uh, of, of their W-2. But if it's, if it's you, it, it's a little bit less than 20. But, hey, you know, maybe you had a really great year of profit. And here's the best part. If you have... If you want to make, you know, put a contribution into that SEP IRA, you have until April 15th of the next year to do it. But wait, it gets better. If you file a legitimate extension, you have until October 15th. So let's break that down. For anybody who's on extension now, and, and if you say, wow, I had profit now, I'm going to have a high tax, Ugh, what do I do? You have time still to contribute to the SEP IRA for 2017 
by October 15th if you're on extension. And again, get those tax breaks and put that money in your pocket. It, it's brilliant. All right. So they can contribute. I mean, I'm always on extension. And that is this is is the SEP treated as a Roth IRA or is it is it is it uh, tax? So it, it's pre-tax. That's why you're getting a deduction for it now. So it, it's a traditional IRA. But again, you can have. Let's just say there's a lot of people who out there have. Uh, have a day job and they have a 401k at work, if they have their side business, and I hate the word side business because I'm not trying to, you know, make it small, you know, what what we do is, is not like that. But if you have that other self-employment business, you can also do the SEP too. Again, we'll never have enough money for later. I don't know anyone who says, oh, my God, I have enough money saved, really, who says that. And, you know, statistics show it's really scary stuff like um, – more than like one third of the people have absolutely zero and zero saved and and ugh. you know you look at this stuff. I, I say, what are people thinking? What what magic is going to happen when you're sixty? Mm-hmm. I actually had a client who came in and every year she she used to empty her four hundred one k accounts. Now she did it for good reason. She was putting her children through college, but you know I I just said to her, listen, children could get loans. You can you can get you could work through school. There's so many things that you can do. There's no loan for retirement. You can't walk in a bank and say, "Hi, I'm old. <laughs> How about some money?" Mm-hmm. You're gonna be well. What are you gonna be paying it back with? So you have to. And I said to her, "What is your plan? Now that you're almost 60, what is your plan? Now that you emptied out every dollar you had?" And she looked at me with a straight face and said, "Match.com." And I said, "Honey, good luck with that." Shocking, but some people, you know, think the magic wand is gonna happen. Mm, 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 mm. You got it. All right. Well, yeah, we're, we're in trouble. <laughs> we're we're right. in trouble if that's what they're doing. So, right. But you know what? It, it's exciting to put the money away. You see those statements build. I mean, you're going to put that money away. You can look, it's fine to reinvest in the business, but you also have to invest in yourself and invest in yourself for later. Judith, how much of that did you see when, when you were working in that industry? Um, it was all, it was, it was the account that was a raider. They'd, they would be rated just like you were sharing the story about, um, the kids. And I was all for the kids need to learn to get some skin in the game. Um, and for school, I mean, I always believe that I paid for my own stuff and I never got help from anybody, um, when I went to school, but that, that, uh, just a variety of things. And it also, that retirement, unless it's done, actually, here's one of the problems. Unless it's done in the regular corporations where they have the automatic deductions for 401ks and, and the like. being a part of your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles each